The reading today is from Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40. Please read the verses responsively. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, Tell it to the church, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. These crisp, cool mornings and these beautiful, sunny, fall-like days and these glimpses of fall's first frecklings of colorful foliage have got me in a sort of spirited mood and my senses fill me and tell me this. They say, ah, fall is in the air. I love fall. Fall brings about new beginnings for school and Sunday school, uh, sports of all sorts of crazy schedules with young people and young parents running everywhere and grandparents going here and there to games and to all sorts of activities. Fall brings about this beautiful change. And fall marks endings as well. So long to those warm summer days of staying up, well, late at night and then sleeping in for whenever you want to sleep in till. So long to those long summer days. And so, just as these cool, crisp mornings and days help us to think about um, fall and the brilliant beauty of these leaves, help us to think about fall, so it is with our lives that we come together as a colorful collective in Christ, gathered here today. Fall, it is a beautiful thing. Fall is in the air, and I love it. Jesus is instructing his disciples today about some things about how we can better be the church, and these instructions go for us as well today as his disciples here gathered how we can be the church, how we can live with one another, how 
we can get along, how we can settle disputes with one another, how we do this in a way that's effective. And there are three radical instructions that Jesus gives to his disciples and for us today. The three instructions he gives have to do with community, conflict, and congregational life. The first piece is community. This radical instruction that Jesus gives for his disciples and for us today in our day and age, our norms, our values have to do with uh, being independent, self-sufficient, a do-it-yourself sort of person. That the church isn't made up of just a bunch of independent individuals who come and then leave, who have nothing to do with one another. Rather, the picture that Jesus paints for us today and the way that it should be and is, is that the church is made up and is a series of relationships of mutual interdependency. That we become a place where we bear one another's burdens. That if someone is hurting in our congregation, we pray for that person. We think of ways that we can help that person. We're asking about that person. If we hear names on the prayers today, what happened to so-and-so? How are they doing? We're bearing their burdens. We're falling together with that person. And so we, as the church, are a place where relationships are very, very important. That when one of us is missing, that we feel that. They're part of the team here at Trinity. They're part of the family. When someone is not here at church, we feel a void because we're made up of inter-independent inner relationships, that we're in relationships with all of us, and that when someone is missing, it affects the entire body. And lastly, we're, uh, we're a place bound together by the cross of Christ, that that's what unifies us. This bondage that we have in Christ frees us and frees us to serve our neighbor in need. Our hands and our hearts become free to serve those who are hurting in our body and outside of our community. And the second piece that Jesus is talking about here in today's gospel is about how to handle conflict. There are disputes or disagreements that happen in our world today and Jesus was talking to his disciples of then, but it speaks to us as well today. The hallmark of a Christian, the hallmark of how a Christian is to handle things is not to just sort of ignore things and pretend like they don't exist. And it's not to avoid conflict. But the hallmark of a Christian in this case is how one resolves conflict. And that is what Jesus says is to handle the matter individually outside of the congregation, to handle the matter one-on-one with the person. And then with these three things in mind in handling the conflict, first seeking to understand and then to be understood. First seeking to forgive and then to forgive that person or then be forgiven. And then, loving the person in and through the whole process, and then to be loved. Couldn't we use more conflict training in our world today? Well, Jesus gives it right here in today's gospel reading. There's an ever-increasing polarization of the ways that people talk about things. These are some helpful instructions for us in our lives today. These three things. And the last, three, the, the last instruction that Jesus talks about is about how to be as a congregation. Because he ends today's gospel with, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And what I thought of here in our day and age, that if we have two or three people gathered in the home, having a conversation about faith, or having a conversation about Jesus, or about confirmation, or anything having to do with God, two or three are gathered, and Christ is there. 
If there's a kid that's getting picked on at school or if there's a kid that feels like their voice is not being heard and two or three friends go and help, there Christ is in the midst of them as well. And then I thought of this sort of humorous example as well, but in midsummer or maybe on the Wednesday between Christmas and uh, New Year's Eve, if two or three are gathered here on a Wednesday night, yeah, we have the audacity to worship. Wherever two or three are gathered, in my name, Jesus says, there I am in the midst of them. And so through this community of interdependence, through confessing and forgiving, and through gathering, uh, whether it's two or three or two or three hundred, we fall together in Christ's name. Several people have asked me about this question, so I thought I'd just talk out my problems with you all. Um, I've been asked this, and I'm not sure quite how to answer it. So I'm going to ask you all how one goes about this, uh, this question. I thought I'd talk it out with you. Here we go. Fall together. When you first hear that, do you think of the season? Like, hey, let's spend this fall together. Or do you think of, okay, on the count of three, we're all going to just crash to the ground. <laughs> One, two, three, boom, let's fall together. I don't know. I guess... The, way, the more and more I think about it, I think the answer to both uh, questions would be yes. It's about the season, and it's about our sinning and our stumbling. That this day is about both. That it's about stumbling. When we struggle, we fall together, and we bear one another's burdens. And so one ministry that bears other people's burdens, one ministry that puts faith into action... Several do here at Trinity, but this is one that has never been talked about, and that is the senior high Sunday school class, led by Britt Qualley, Lori Bourne, and Troy Schreifels. For years, they've been doing all sorts of really good work, and this year I want to highlight some of the great things that they're doing. One of the things that they're doing on a, I think it's a monthly basis, is senior high students are going to be on Trinity's bus with senior citizens from Woodland and Bethany nursing homes. That is going to be an amazing ministry where they share in cross-generational conversation with these folks who are coming uh, from Woodland and Bethany. So seniors and seniors together sharing in conversation. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Another ministry that they've done for years, but I'm just telling you about it now, is that they make hot dishes and lasagnas for families who are in need. It's been a wonderful ministry. And just being on the receiving end of it, as uh, Aaron and Morgan's father passed away this last June, being on the receiving end of that, receiving those lasagnas, those hot dishes, I mean, that was love. I could feel the love in that 9 by 13 hot dish, lasagna, whatever it was. It was good. Amen. Amen. And so it is a beautiful thing to be on the receiving end of that, what these senior high youth are doing. And the other ministry that they're doing this year is they're making uh, women's shelter blankets and then serving at the soup kitchen, I think, several times this year. And so this group puts faith into action, and they bear one another's burdens by putting faith into action. They say, someone's hurting, let's, let's go help those people. It's been a beautiful ministry. And so just as we fall together in Christ, we rise together. This service culminates with the song, Lift High the Cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. And so as we lift these colorful balloons, we raise up all that we are. Every single color, every single individual here, we're all uniquely and wonderfully made. And these colors become a symbol of who we are in Christ. That we raise up our balloons, we raise up our hearts to our Lord who has given us so much, so much bounty and grace. And so we rise together, we rise with the sun 
And we rise and arrive to be here at church today to fall together in Christ. And we rise upward and outward for the sake of the world. I love that image on the front of your bulletin cover. Beautiful, colorful bulletin cover today as the individual or whatever you would like that to symbolically be. But it looks like somebody is just lifting their hands upward and outward for the sake of the world with the cross of Christ there as well. Yes, we, like this bulletin cover, we receive our nourishment from deep roots. The roots of reformation, the roots of good soil, the roots of uh, being nourished in a place where faith is valued in a congregation, in our families. Tapping deep from the wellspring of our baptism rooted into Christ who died on the tree for us that we might rise in him. And so there's this image of these beautiful leaves on the bulletin cover and this is a reminder for us that even in death, in our dying moments, there can be beautiful things because we live and gather in Christ. That we fall together and rise together in Jesus Christ. And so as we receive all that God has given us and we reach our hands upward and outward for the sake of the world, may we then be free, our hearts and our hands be free to serve our neighbors in need, going out into the world with faith in action as we fall together and rise together in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>